The truth that God is eternal is a basic dogma of Christianity. God's eternity not only means that he is without beginning or end, but also without before or after. God's eternity, which man of course cannot fully comprehend, but must believe, profess, and defend according to man's capacity, signifies God's interminable and perfect possession of life. The truth that God is eternal is connected to the dogma that God is absolutely immutable in his divinity, which was taught by various ecumenical councils. However, in a futile attempt to defend the false theology known as Palamism, which holds that in God there's a real distinction between the divine essence and, quote, uncreated energies, various Eastern, quote, Orthodox speakers actually deny the dogmas of God's eternity and immutability. For example, Eastern Orthodox personality Jay Dyer, whom we refute in our video called Jay Dyer Exposed and Palamism Refuted, recently interviewed Eastern Orthodox philosopher Dr. David Bradshaw. In the interview, which included two other individuals, Bradshaw was asked about a point we've made, namely that Gregory Palamas taught heresy when he asserted that certain supposedly uncreated energies have a beginning. Palamas' teaching is obviously heresy because everything that begins to exist is created. Bradshaw responded to the objection by flat out stating that, quote, not everything uncreated is eternal, end quote. Wow. Dyer agreed with the blatantly heretical and non-Christian assertion, before playing what was said, let's quote a few things about the eternity and immutability of God. Psalm 90. Before the mountains were made, or the earth and the world was formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalm 102. You are the same, and your years have no end. Daniel 6.26. For he is the living God, enduring forever. John 8.58. Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. St. John Chrysostom, Greek Father. Now the expression I am signifies being ever and being without beginning of being really and absolutely. Pope St. Leo the Great dogmatic tome to Flavian accepted by Chalcedon. In the divinity itself whereby the only begotten is co-eternal and consubstantial with the Father. He also says the Son is, quote, almighty from the almighty, co-eternal from the eternal, not later in time, not lower in power. One could quote many other things on the matter of God's eternity slash eternality. God is eternal. The Council of Nicaea, in its dogmatic canon, anathematized those who say that there was a time when the sun was not, or that he is subject to alteration or change. This truth, of course, also applies to the Father and the Holy Spirit. To say that God's uncreated divinity or any aspect of it was not at one time would be heresy and blasphemy since God is eternal and everything that was not at one time is a creature. Likewise, everything that is subject to change is created. But God is not subject to change. James 1.17 the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Malachi 3.6, For I, the Lord, do not change. Hebrews 13.8, Jesus Christ yesterday and today, and the same forever. Notice that the dogmatic canon of Nicaea connects God's eternity with his immutability. There was never once when the Son was not. Likewise, he is not subject to alteration or change. The two go together. To deny one is to deny the other. All three persons of the Trinity are equally perfect and complete in divinity. The divinity does not acquire new things or energies or grow or change at all. As St. Athanasius said, The faith of Christians acknowledges the blessed triad as unalterable and perfect and ever what it was, neither adding to it what is more, nor imputing to it any loss. He also said, For scripture signifying that the nature of all things created is alterable and changeable, yet accepting the Son from these, it teaches that he changes everything else and is himself not changed. The third letter of St. Cyril to Nestorius accepted by Ephesus stated that the word is unalterable and absolutely unchangeable, and remains always the same as the scriptures say. If God in his divinity is absolutely unchangeable, always exists, and remains the same, as Christians must profess, then God does not acquire any new powers or, quote, divine energies that he didn't always have. That's pretty simple. For a later acquisition of, quote, divine energies would be a change or an expansion in the divinity. Hence the idea that the divinity can acquire something new or that the divine slash uncreated mode of existence changes into a different divine slash uncreated mode of existence at some later point in time is heresy. St. Basil on the Holy Spirit. As Baruch, when he wishes to exhibit the immutability and immobility of the divine mode of existence, says, For you sit forever and we perish utterly. By the way, I've read St. Basil's work on the Holy Spirit and all of his more than 300 letters as they have been published in one popular version of his letters. He definitely did not teach Palamism. We will perhaps expand upon that in the future. Eastern schismatics misinterpret and misuse fathers of the church. It's similar to how Protestants misuse St. Paul and fathers of the church when they falsely claim that they taught sola fide or sola scriptura. Back to the matter of God's immutability. 
The letter of Cyril to John of Antioch accepted by Chalcedon also stated, quote, Those are quite mad who suppose that a shadow of change is conceivable in connection with the divine nature of the word, for he remains what he is always and has not been changed, nor can he ever be changed, nor is he capable of change, end quote. The Christian truth on God's immutability is very well established. Many other things could be quoted. But let's play what the Eastern, quote, Orthodox speakers said in contradiction of this Christian dogma. One, one which was a concern to me, which was uh, confusing to me, and I think a lot of people, is uh, these, this idea of uncreated energies that have a beginning. Um, yeah. And uh, how, how, does, how is this, is, is this, does this mean that uh, uncreatedness and eternality are separable in, in, in reality? Uh, and how does this not um, imply some kind of mutability on God's part. I know we did a, a, a cover of this earlier, but um, yeah, I am curious about that, and that is a, an apologetic, uh, an argument often used. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, it does mean, I think, that not everything uncreated is eternal. Um, so, as I mentioned, you know, the energies of the Spirit, or the gifts of the Spirit, um clearly are not eternal because mm -hmm. they're given to creatures who themselves are not eternal, right? <laughs> so the gift of prophecy, for instance, um, you know, that's not eternal. Human beings haven't always existed, and certainly the particular ones who are given this gift. Uh, the gift of, I don't know, spiritual discernment, gift of healing. Um, those are, are energies of the Spirit. And, and you, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, St. Paul uses the word, energemata, you know, that yep. that's, that's why the Father has come to call them that way. Um, another example that they use, uh, that, that Gregor Palamas uses, is the act of creation itself. Mm -hmm. That isn't a divine energy. It's something God does that manifests his character, his nature. But clearly it's um, not eternal, <laughs> Because, you know, you read Genesis, and God rested on the seventh day. Um, so um, it began, and it ended. And now, of course, God maintains creation in existence. That's true as well, but that's not the same as the act of creating that's described in Genesis. So um, um, that's why not everything um, that is... That is um, not everything uncreated has to be eternal. Right. Right. Um, what was the second part of the question? Was um, uh, just how 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 this doesn't uh, have some uh, kind of mutability on on God's part. I oh. think a struggle for people is because when people think of uncreated, yes, they think of something that. Is eternal because to to be created. Me, well, I mean, Aquinas says this: uh, to be created is to have beginning in time. I think so. Yeah. How? Yeah, it, it it seems to because the the divine energies of God. It seems to be that the critique is that it, it's it's a mutability or change and violates God's immutability. Yeah. Well, um, it doesn't because God is eternal, but He's perfectly capable of acting in time. Exactly. And revealing himself differently right. in different ways, in different times. And that's what the energies are. You know, they're, they're divine acts mm -hmm. that manifest God and that uh, in which we can share. And so, um, or at least many of them, maybe not all of them, um, but things like the energies of the Spirit mm -hmm. and even the uh, uncreated light. Um, but, um, uh, you know, that's just basic Christianity, that God, <laughs> that the eternal enters time. Bradshaw flat out states that not everything uncreated is eternal. Dyer agrees with him. As should be obvious, that's totally heretical. It's not Christian, as we've seen and will further prove. He tries to justify this clear heresy by referring to the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. He presupposes that those gifts, as they exist in man, are uncreated. But that's wrong. The gifts described in 1 Corinthians 12 are the new actualities of man, which are the result of God's action upon him. The action on the side of God as changer slash mover is the divine power and therefore it is uncreated. 
but the action as received in man, that is, the grace or spiritual gift that man possesses, is a created effect. It's a new actuality to which God has raised man. That's why 1 Corinthians 12 refers to the greater gifts of the Spirit. There isn't greater or less in the divinity, but there are greater or lesser actualities to which the Holy Spirit can raise men by His gracious action. Also note that here we are not talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit which accompanies justifying righteousness. We are talking here about the gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, and generally about grace as it has its existence in a human soul. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are also diverse and multiple, but the divinity is one. The gifts of the Spirit are the supernatural effects that result from God's gracious action upon man. The gifts of the Spirit, as well as sanctifying grace, are not a separate created substance placed between man and God, contrary to what J. Dyer wrongly argued for years concerning the Catholic view on grace. Uh, it is actually a created infused substance. So, With grace or graced, rather, is a new way that the man exists. Hence, Catholic theology identifies grace as it is in man, as an accident. That is, something that exists in another, not as a substance. That is, something that exists in itself. As received in man, grace is a new way that the man exists. By grace, God raises man to a new capability or actuality to which man could never attain by his natural powers. Thus, there is no support in 1 Corinthians 12 for the novel and heretical view that certain uncreated things have a beginning. In fact, the falsity of Bradshaw's argument is clear if you carefully think about it. For instance, he brings up the example of the gift of prophecy. Well, what exactly is that? Think about it. The gift slash grace of prophecy, if we consider prophecy in regard to future events, involves man's intellect changing from not knowing future things to possessing knowledge of future things, according to the man's capacity and understanding. But God always had a perfect knowledge of those things. So the gift of prophecy in man is a change in how man thinks and exists and knows. That's clearly a created effect. Yes, it's a new actuality to which God alone could raise him. Man could never attain that new knowledge and understanding by his natural power and effort. That's why it's a grace, but it's a created effect. The one who gives it is uncreated, but the change brought about in man, his current existence and way of thinking with that knowledge, is a created effect. And a similar point applies to all of the other examples he would give. This is also why justifying righteousness is repeatedly called in scripture a new creation. That totally refutes the Palamite position on justification. In a future video, we will perhaps expand upon this and show how the Catholic position, which is the true biblical position, fits with St. Peter's teaching that justification involves a participation in the divine nature. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit to which Bradshaw makes reference don't at all support the Palamite heresy, that certain things that begin to exist are uncreated. Bradshaw then brings up the act of creation itself and how it's not eternal according to him. We've addressed this before, but he is confusing the power slash act that is the cause of creation, namely the divine essence, with the temporal ad extra effects. The act of creation when we consider the agent is God slash the divine essence itself, and therefore it is eternal. But it doesn't therefore follow that the effects of that act, namely the created things, are eternal. They are not. God creates things not by instruments, but by will. He freely willed from all eternity that certain effects would take place in time, and that on the seventh day there would be a cessation of those effects. That doesn't mean that God at some point later decided to create, which would constitute a new decision or movement. It means that the effects began on the first day and ceased on the seventh day. As St. Thomas says, nothing therefore prevents our saying that God's action existed from all eternity, whereas its effect was not present from eternity, but existed at that time when, from all eternity, he ordained it. End quote. Bradshaw then repeats his heretical position, quote, that's why not everything uncreated has to be eternal. That's why not everything um, that is, that is um, not everything uncreated has to be eternal. Right. As we've shown, that's totally heretical. The person who posed the question then wonders how this doesn't contradict God's immutability. Uh, just how, how, how this doesn't uh, have some a kind of mutability on, on God's part. They should be concerned about that, since their position definitely contradicts God's immutability. Bradshaw responds by stating, quote, Well, it doesn't because God is eternal, but he's perfectly capable of acting in time, dot dot dot. That's basic Christianity, end quote. Actually, what he has presented is a denial of basic Christianity. Basic Christianity is that God's divinity doesn't change. Basic Christianity is that everything that was not at one time is created. So they deny basic Christianity and dishonestly present it as if it's basic Christianity. Incredible. The canon from Nicaea destroys Palamism and Eastern quote Orthodox theology. 
Bradshaw also attempts to confuse the issue by stating that God acts in time, as if that's all they were saying. Yes, God acts in time in the sense that he upholds, empowers, changes things by the power of his immutable and eternal divinity. The Son of God also entered into time by assuming human nature and becoming man, without any change to his divinity. Let me repeat that, without any change to his divinity. But they aren't merely saying that God acts in time, which could be understood in a true sense. They are rather saying that the divinity, which is necessarily eternal, has an aspect to it that is not eternal. That's heresy and actually nonsense. It is to state that ultimately the divinity is not eternal. It is also to deny simplicity because if the divinity has one aspect that always existed and another that began to exist, it's divided into parts. Also consider what St. John of Damascus, who did not teach Palamism contrary to their assertions, says. St. John of Damascus reaffirms the Christian truth that everything that changes is created and that the uncreated God is wholly immutable. Quote, All things that exist are either created or uncreated. If then things are created, it follows that they are also wholly mutable. But if things are uncreated, they must in all consistency be also wholly immutable. The creator then, being uncreated, is also wholly immutable. End quote. Again, we see that everything that changes is created. Well, Father Dumitru Staniloe, who was an Orthodox professor in Romania and considered by many adherents of Eastern Orthodoxy to have been one of the greatest Eastern Orthodox theologians of the 20th century, openly taught that God is not immutable in the uncreated energies. He said that God himself changes for our sake in his operations, and he referred to the Palamite doctrine of the uncreated energies which do change. That is clear heresy against the Christian faith. It further proves our point that Palamite Eastern Orthodoxy denies the dogma that God is immutable in his divinity. Now, the Eastern Orthodox Palamites believe that certain uncreated energies began to exist. Therefore, such an energy did not exist at one time. It once was not. But that which does not exist cannot possibly bring itself into existence. It can only be brought into existence by some other thing that actually exists. So the Palamite, quote, uncreated energy that once was not, but then began to be, must have been acted upon by some other thing that always existed. And in that case, the divinity would definitely be composite, that is, composed of parts, not simple. There would be the part that always existed and the part that began to exist. And after it began to exist, the, quote, divinity would have more than it previously did. Therefore, by adhering to the Palamite heresy that some uncreated energies began to exist, they deny God's simplicity in addition to his immutability and eternity. They worship a creature, for they worship that which once was not. That's why their theology is idolatrous. Something that was brought into existence by another is not all-powerful. It's inferior. It's subject to something else. And they even admit that the energies are transcended infinitely by the essence. They are worshiping a creature but calling it uncreated. In fact, note that the canon of Nicaea not only condemns the position that the Son once was not, but also the position that he was made of things that were not. But that's what they hold. They hold that the energies are God, and therefore that the divinity is composed of certain energies that once were not. That is tantamount to the position anathematized by Nicaea. Now let's put the final nail in the coffin of this heresy. We've shown that they deny God's immutability, eternity, and simplicity, but consider again Bradshaw's key assertion, which Dyer agrees with. Not everything uncreated is eternal. He even repeated the heresy in almost the exact same words later. While St. Athanasius, repeating the faith of the church on this, directly contradicts this heresy. Quote, It is plain then from the above that the scriptures declare the Son's eternity. It is equally plain from what follows that the Arian phrases he was not and before and when are in the same scriptures predicated of creatures. Thus it appears that the phrases once was not and before it came to be and when and the like belong to things originate in creatures which come out of nothing but are alien to the word, end quote. As we can see, the phrases once was not, before, etc. are applicable to creatures, not to God, since he is eternal. Well, the Palamites say that some of the energies once were not, that's a fact, yet they maintain that those things that once were not are actually uncreated and therefore God, the creator, it's heresy. There are many similar quotes from the fathers that we could cite on this basic point of Christianity. Here's another one from St. John Chrysostom. Quote, A nature that came into being, for that which came to be, be it what it may, has come to be either in time or the age before time was. But the Son of God is above not only times, but all ages which were before, for he is the creator and maker of them, as the apostle says, by whom also he made the ages. Now the maker necessarily is before the thing made. For all that has been made, both heaven and earth, has been made in time, and has its beginning in time, and none of them is without beginning. 
to be eternal and without beginning is most peculiar to God, end quote. He contrasts that which came to be, the created things, with the Creator, who made all of those things that came to be. Hence, there is no, quote, uncreated thing that came to be that once was not. The following quote from St. Athanasius also applies to the Palamite heresy. When describing a false view, he says, quote, This perhaps he borrowed from the Stoics, who maintain that their God contracts and again expands with the creation and then rests without end. End quote. This view that St. Athanasius rejects is similar to what Palamites hold. They hold that in order to interact with created things, the divinity expands, acquiring new uncreated energies. But that is false. We should also quote St. Sophronius of Jerusalem's profession of faith, which was accepted by Constantinople III. It declared belief in the one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that is, the nature which is eternal and without beginning, and brought from non-existence into existence and created what previously was not, end quote. As we can see, what previously was not was created by the eternal God. That's Christianity. But the Palamites hold that certain things that previously were not are uncreated. It's not Christian. One could quote many other things and other fathers, but it should be very clear that to affirm that something which begins to exist is uncreated is heresy. And there are two things to keep in mind when considering these dogmatic truths of the Christian faith. There is what we must believe according to our capacity and what we must profess. If you focus on what Christians must profess, it should be apparent that Dyer, Bradshaw, and the other Palamites don't profess Christianity. They don't consistently profess that the divinity is absolutely immutable. They contradict that. They don't profess that everything that begins is a creation. They openly reject that. But the Christian church teaches that everything that begins is created since God is eternal and he is the creator of everything else. So they can attempt to philosophize for 5,000 hours. They can try to explain their way around these simple professions of Christian dogma. It's to no avail. They are professing heresy. Romans 122, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And that's how false teachers deceive people. They bury heresies under mountains of rhetoric. They mix lies with a multiplicity of words. They inculcate false doctrines while they purport to give a deeper explanation or a historical analysis so that the simple rule of faith to which Christians are bound gets lost in the process. But you are not permitted to say whatever you want on these matters. You must conform and restrict your language, teaching, and profession to the rule of Christian faith. You are not permitted to say that the divinity changes. They do. You are not permitted to say that the divinity in any way or in any aspect has a beginning. They do. They are heretics. Period. Don't be foolish enough to fall for the false philosophy of such false teachers. Palamism is a heretical novelty. It wasn't taught by any saintly father of the church, and it is contrary to the councils. Embrace the traditional Catholic faith, the one true faith of Jesus Christ, necessary for salvation.